Warning. Before using any firearm or firearm accessory, read and understand the warnings and instructions included in the firearm and firearm accessory. If you are still not sure how the firearm or firearm accessory works, contact the manufacturer of the product. Taking time to learn how to properly use the firearm or firearm accessory will ensure your safety and the safety of others. Drew at Mean Arms here with an instructional video on the proper use and installation of the Endomag. First, I'll be showing you how the Endomag's ejector works. It's important to remember and understand that while the Endomag is installed like this one, your ejector is actually part of your magazine and not your rifle. With my rifle on safe and a dummy round, I'm going to chamber this round. When the magazine is removed, your ejector is removed. So for any ammo in the chamber to be ejected from the firearm, the bolt carrier group must travel rearward with the magazine still in the firearm. This can be confusing for the first time user of an endomag since a common practice is to eject the magazine first. Instead of ejecting the magazine first, make sure your rifle's on safe, lock the bolt carrier group to the rear, and now you can remove the magazine. Now that you understand how the integrated ejector works, I'll explain the installation and removal process of the Endomag. Before proceeding, please verify your state and local magazine laws. After opening your Endomag, it's important to note that the Endomag comes preset at 10 round capacity, which can be changed by cutting at one of the designated cut marks. Once you've cut the round limiter, you cannot return to a lower round capacity. The round capacities for each cut mark are in the instructions that came with your endomag. Simply cut at the desired capacity mark and discard the section removed. Now let's install your endomag inside your PMAG tube. First, make sure that your Gen 2 or Gen 3 30 round PMAG is not loaded with any ammo before disassembling it. On the bottom of the magazine, depress the oval shaped base plate retainer inward. Now remember, your base plate is under spring pressure here. Slide the base plate just enough so that the oval shape of the base plate and the oval shape of the retainer are no longer in line with each other. Place the base plate of the magazine on a firm surface, standing vertically. Keeping constant downward pressure, hold the exposed base plate and slide the magazine tube off the base plate onto the surface. Now slowly letting off the downward pressure, your magazine tube will lift off the base plate. Now we're going to pull the base plate retainer and spring assembly out of the magazine tube. Make sure to hang onto these components so you can convert back to 5.56. Now that the magazine tube is empty, simply insert your endomag feed rails first. Press firmly upward on the rectangle hole of the endomag until the feed rails snap over the feed lips of the magazine tube. Make sure that the feed rails are fully seated and not bowed inward before proceeding. Now to put the base plate back on. We want to press the down the oval detent on the endomag to allow the base plate to slide over. Once it latches in place, you're now ready to run 9mm in your endomag. Now I'm going to show you how to convert your endomag back to 5.56. First, depress the oval shape of the endomag inward and slide the base plate off. Go into the top of the mag, pinch the feed rails inward and push down around the feed lips of the magazine tube. Do not forcefully pull the endomag with the feed rail still seated as this will bend your feed rails. The endomag should slide out with ease. Now take your original spring assembly and slide it in with the follower first. Compress the spring and slide your base plate back into place. You're back to shooting 556. Five, Thanks for watching this Endomag instructional video, and as always, support your local gun dealers and go let some freedom ring.